Hey everyone, welcome back to another video in the Simplifying DevOps series. My name is Kunal Verma and in this particular one, we'll be learning about the Linux file system. So let's get started. Now before we move forward with the main topic of today, I just want to make sure that we are on the same page here. So in the previous few videos in a Linux section, you learned about what exactly is the Linux operating system. You got to know about the few essential commands. You got to know about, you know, what are the different types of package managers that are used. Now in this particular one, we'll be using a few commands from those particular video, especially from the video that Ayush made, the essential Linux command. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I would definitely recommend you to do that. You would find that video here or here in the I button. And I'll also put a link in the description box down below. We'll just do a quick recap of the commands that we'll be using in this particular video. So the first one is the ls command, which is basically used to list all the files and directories. The cd command, which is called as the change directory command. It is basically used to switch between directories. If you want to jump onto the, some other directory, you can use the cd command. The next one is the cd dot dot. So this basically is used to switch back to a particular directory. So for example, if I'm in the Kunal directory and I want to go back to my desktop directory, I just type cd dot dot and I'll get back to the previous directory. The next one is the PWD, which is called as the present working directory. Now this one basically specifies in which directory you are currently in. So that's basically what the PWD command does. The next one is the cat command, which is nothing, but it basically is used to view the contents of a particular file in your terminal itself. So this command basically comes handy when you're, you know, want to view some kind of configuration files, or you just want to quickly see what you have entered in the txt file. So basically the cat command is used in those particular use cases. The last one is the cp command, which is basically used to copy the contents of a particular file to another file. So that's just the cp command. So these were the few commands that we'll be using in this particular video. But of course, there are a lot of Linux commands out there that you should be aware of before moving forward with the DevOps series. So I'll definitely recommend you to check out the essential Linux commands video. I'll link it in the description box down below. So yeah, make sure you check that out and let's jump right into the topic now. Now let us see what exactly is the file system. I know that you just straight away want to jump into the terminal, but it's really important to understand the crux of a particular topic, right? So if you were to search on Google, what exactly is the file system, you would definitely come across this particular line, which says Linux file system is generally a built-in layer of a Linux operating system used to handle the data management of the storage. All in all, everything in Linux is a file, right? So the network settings that you do, the commands that you type in your operating system, that is a file. So the file system is basically the built-in layer in your operating system that is used to manage all these particular files, the data that you are storing, you know, the storage devices that you are using, everything in Linux is a file and the file system is used to manage all that, right? The file system is officially called as the file system hierarchy. Why hierarchy? Because everything starts from a one file and it basically branches out to different kinds of directories, different kinds of files. So that is why the hierarchy name came from. So everything related to files is managed by the Linux file system. And the file system is not just for the Linux operating system. It is also present in Windows or any other operating system that, that you are using. There are different kinds of file system out there, but we'll be covering specifically the Linux file system in this particular video. Now, someone out there would definitely have this particular question in mind saying, Hey Kunal, what more is there to manage about a file? A file is a file which has some data in it. So there are a few aspects here. Uh, the number one could be the name, which is for example, main.txt. The file could have a size. So that could start from one KB, one MB and go all the way to GBs and sometimes TB as well. The file could have a creation date. When was that created? The most important is the permissions. So if you have gone through the essential Linux commands video, this particular topic was covered in much more detail about what are the types of permissions that a particular file has. So there are read permissions, write and execute. So these are the three kinds of permissions that a particular file can have. And you can basically switch between different kinds of permissions. Again, more info in that particular video, but these are some of the aspects of a file that the Linux file system actually manages for you. So it is built in into the Linux operating system, right? Now, a few minutes ago, I mentioned that the file system is not just common to the Linux operating system, but you can find it on different operating systems out there as well. So let's take an example of Windows. So if you are a Windows user, you might be familiar with the C drive, right? So in Windows, everything starts from a C drive. So you have the C drive here and then all the other files and directories and folders fall under the C drive, right? 
So in the same scenario, if we talk about Linux, everything starts from a single directory, which is called as the root directory. So in the Linux file system, the root directory is the first directory that will be visible to you and all the other files and folders fall under that particular directory. You can definitely compare your root directory of Linux to the C drive of Windows so you can connect the dots there, right? So let's focus on Linux right now. As I mentioned that everything in Linux starts from a root directory, you'll definitely be wondering, so what exactly does the root directory look like? So this is a very, I would say, intimidating or overwhelming diagram of the root directory. So you can see this is the root directory here and there are a lot of folders. We have bin, boot, dev, basically all sorts of folders out there. And these sort of branch out to, you know, subdirectories, subfiles, and we have a lot of files and folders in Linux. It is not visible when you are, you know, just using the UI, but if you dig a little deeper, there is a lot more to Linux than we actually know. Don't worry at all. In this particular video, we'll definitely be going through all these essential folders that you see here. And by the end of the video, I'm sure that you will be aware of what exactly goes where in the Linux operating system. Awesome. So now we know that what exactly is a file system, what is its need in the Linux operating system and even other operating systems as well. But now it's time to head over the terminal and just see for yourself what exactly does each folder in the root directory looks like. So yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, so for this particular video, I'll be using a terminal which is called as Killer Coda. So if you want to access this particular scenario, this is the Ubuntu operating system running in your web browser itself. So if you want to access this, I'll give you the link for this particular scenario. It's free to use. You shout out to Killer Coda for giving this particular platform for people like us who wants to just experiment with the operating system. It's really easy to use. Make sure to check it out. Now the interface of your terminal might look a bit different from mine because I have installed an external theme which basically will help me to explain things in a better way to you. You don't need to worry about that. Just try to follow along with me if you are doing so. Again, the terminal link is in the description and I'll highly recommend you to follow along. All right, so the very first step would be to head over to the root directory. So let's just see in which directory we are in. So currently we are in the root users directory. So by default in this particular terminal, the user is the root, but we want to actually go into the root directory, which is denoted by this particular slash, right? So for this, I'll just type CD slash. Remember the CD command is used to change directories. So hit enter. And now we are currently in the root directory. If we just hit LS to list down all the files and folders. So these are the typical files and folders that you'll find in any Linux operating system. Some of them might vary and it would depend on what kind of Linux kernel you are on right now. For example, that could be CentOS, Fedora, but typically you'll definitely find all these major folders that are listed here in your root directory. So let's head over to the first one, which is called as the bin directory. So we'll do CD slash bin. So now we are inside the bin directory. So bin stands for binaries, right? And it basically is used to store all the commands that you are using in your terminal. As I mentioned previously, everything in Linux is a file. So even the commands that you are typing, the ls command, the cd command, pwd, these are essentially stored as files in your bin directory. So if we just do ls here, so these are all the files in the bin directory and essentially these all are commands that you may be familiar with if you have been using Linux for a long time now. So if you just head over, you know, you can explore all these particular files, but I just want to quickly go through just one file here. You can see we have docker D. We also have the telnet command. Uh, if you are familiar with windows, you might be using the telnet command. There is one command which is called you might be familiar with that. Just wait for it. You might find it here. The chmod command, uh, again, used to change the permissions. It is a file as well. Here we have the ls command that we just used, right? So if we just want to view what exactly is in this ls command. So let's see what is inside this ls command. So if we do cat ls. So what exactly is this, right? So this is the computer language that only your machine would understand. You would definitely not understand, but this is some kind of a configuration that is going on behind the scenes, which basically tells your operating system, okay, you are using the ls command right now. Okay, so let's do something interesting here. Essentially, ls is a file, right? Now, what would happen if we were to copy the contents of ls into some other file? Let's see, we would write sudo. Now we would need root permissions for this. And for that, we use sudo. If you want to know more about this, check out the essential Linux command video. Everything is covered there. So we'll do sudo copy ls we want to copy the contents of ls into some other file let's say cube simplify right awesome so it's done if it doesn't show any error it's done 
Now, if we do ls, uh, we would find the cube simplify file somewhere around. All right, so we have found the file. Now, cube simplify is actually a command. You don't believe me? Let me just type it down here. Cube simplify. And boom. Hey, this is just the ls command. It is listing down all the files and folders that are inside the bin directory. The same thing that ls does. So what exactly happened here is this, we copied the contents of ls into some other file called that cube simplify and now cube simplify is acting as the ls command. Interesting right? And in this particular way you can you know experiment with any other file that you want, you can you know rename the files, you can do experiment with this but essentially this shows that everything in this particular directory, every command that you are typing is a file and it is stored in the bin folder right? So that is the bin directory. Now similar to the bin directory we have another one which is called as sbin. So let's head over to the root directory first and here you will find something called as sbin. So s stands for super. So it is basically the bin folder only but it has some super user commands that only the admin use. So let's quickly change to the sbin directory. So these commands essentially are only used by the admin users or the root users. So you definitely would need root permissions for this. And again, this comes with a warning as some of these commands are only meant for admin purposes. So I definitely not recommend you to experiment with this folder here. But this is something to know that sbin only contains the admin user commands. And of course, you'll need root permissions to do anything here. Now let's explore the user directory. So you see user here. Let's change to user. So if we go back a bit in time where Unix was just launched, so user directory was essentially used to store all the users home directories, right? So all the essential files which was related to that particular user of the operating system, those particular files and directories were stored in the user folder. Now it has been renamed to the home directory which we'll look into a little bit later. But essentially if we type ls here, you'll notice one thing. There is a bin folder and there is the sbin. Now you wonder, hey Kunal, what's the difference between, you know, because we saw the bin and the sbin folder in the root directory as well, right? So what's the difference between this uh, sbin and bin and the one that we saw in the root directory? So essentially, they don't have any difference, right? So if we just do cd bin, you'll find all the commands that were listed in the roots bin directory here as well. So you might wonder, okay, we get it. Here the bin and the sbin are the same and the contents are de definitely the same. So the commands that we are typing, the ls command, the cwd and all the essential commands that were listed in the bin directory from where the file is being picked up, right? There might be some fixed location from where that particular file is picked of that particular command, right? So for that, we'll be using another command which is called as where. So if you want to know about, let's say, ls command, so we'll type where ls. So it's getting picked up from both these folders, you know, either one of them. But in most cases, you see that most of the commands are being picked up from this user's bin folder, right? So this would be the location. There is another command which is used, which is called as which command that might work on your operating system. But uh, here where command is just working. Commonly, uh, the commands are getting picked up from this user's bin folder, right? So this is something that you can check out. So another directory which I want to talk about is the local directory. Now here we can basically store all our custom command binaries. So in the future, if you want to create your own command and you create a binary file for that. So this, this would be the location where you will store your custom binaries that you create, right? So this is the local folder. And these are some of the important directories that are present in the user directory. So there are the others as well. There is a library directory which is used to basically store the shared libraries. We'll be exploring the library folder a little bit later. There is the games directory. I'm really not sure what's there in it. So let's just type games. Uh, there's nothing right now. Again, you don't really need to know what exactly is present in each of these directories, but there are some essential directories that you should be aware of, which I'm mentioning to you in this video. So the next one in the line is the boot directory. And from the name is suggest, it basically contains all the essential files that your system needs to boot, right? So if we just quickly go inside the directory and ls. So these are some of the essential files that are listed here. The number might vary in terms of which kind of kernel you're using right now. Again, this directory comes with a huge warning that you are not supposed to touch it because if you mess up even one file from here, you might not be able to access your Linux system again. And repairing or reconfiguring your whole system is a lot much pain. So I'll definitely recommend you to not touch any of the files that are present in the boot directory, right? The next one is the var directory. So if we just head over to the root one 
and here we have the var directory so the var directory is basically a storage place for the files that your system writes into so while performing a particular operation your system might write some kind of data into some particular files so those files are stored in the var directory so if we just explore the var once so if we just look here the important directories i would say is the log so the log directory is basically used to store all the log files so everything that is happening in your operating system at a particular time every operation that is being done all of that is stored in the log directory. You can compare the log file to a gate entry register where each and every person who goes inside that gate has to register their information into that register, right? So log files basically stores all the operation information that is being performed right now by our system, right? So this is the log directory. The other important one is the cache directory where all the cache files are stored. When your system does some kind of operations, there might be some cache storage that your system may need. So those particular files are stored in the cache directory, right? You can explore all the other directories, but essentially these are the two important ones in the var folder. Now the next one is the TMP directory, which basically stands for temporary. So this directory stores all the temporary files that your application might generate when they're running, right? So if you want to just uh, have a look here, so these are some of the files that have been already generated. So these may vary in terms of volume as it totally depends on the amount of applications you're running at a particular time. But that is basically the TMP folder. It stores the temporary file and you don't need the sudo or root permissions to access these particular files, right? All right. So the next one is the lib directory, which stands for library. So this basically contains some kind of code files that the application running on your operating system might use. And you might definitely find this lib directory scattered all around the file system. But this one particularly in the root directory is pretty important because this contains all the essential kernel modules. The kernel modules are the essential drivers that makes things work like your video card, your Wi-Fi, the printer which is connected to your operating system. All these essential devices that are connected need some kind of drivers and that are basically the kernel modules. And those particular kernel modules are stored in the roots lib folder. So this is why this lib directory is pretty important. So if we just quickly have a look here, so these are some of the essential code files that your application may use. And you may also find the kernel modules here that are essentially used for the devices that you're using with your operating system. So yeah, that is the lib folder. The next one is the home directory. So the home directory is basically where your user lives, right? All the files related to your particular user on your operating system lives in your home directory. So right now we just have one user called as Ubuntu, but you might have some other kind of user. I might have a Kunal user on my own operating system. So all the files related to that particular user lives inside the home directory. And you can definitely check out what kind of files are inside a particular user. So if we just go to the Ubuntu user, there is nothing right now. So yeah, that's the home directory. Now in this particular video, I have mentioned the root user several times, right? So there might be a separate place for where the root users files are stored. For this purpose, we have the root directory, right? So if we just cd into the root directory. So here we have the entire file system, a directory called as a file system. And essentially it's nothing but the root directory. So if we just cd into the file system. So you see, this is the exact copy of the root directory that we have here. And again, this is the home for the super user. So you are not supposed to touch even a single file here. And there might be some additional files as well in your operating system if you try it out. But here we have all the essential files under the root directory, as I mentioned previously. So yeah, this is the root directory. All right, so the next essential directory that we have in line is the dev directory. So it essentially means devices. So all the essential devices that you plug in externally into your operating system or your machine, that would be registered into the devices folder, right? So if we go into this dev folder here, so these are some of the files that are present here. You don't need to know what exactly do they mean, but it's just that in the dev folder, all the devices that you are externally using, for example, your CPU, you can see your CPU here. If you plug in a new webcam here, if you plug in a new device, that would be registered into this device directory or the dev directory. Now the next one, and I would say one of the most important directories that we have here is called the ETC directory, right? So if we just CD into this one, now the etc directory is essentially called as the etc file, but I think it should be named as everything to configure because all the system wide configuration files that you have are present in the etc directory, right? So for example, the network settings that you do in your operating system are present in this particular directory. So there would be a folder named as network here. So if we just cd into this one, oops, cd network. 
So in this particular directory, you would typically have your network configurations file. If you set up or configure additional network settings, that would be visible in this particular directory here. So ATC basically has all the system wide configurations file. And again, this particular directory is pretty essential if we talk about in the DevOps perspective as well, because you'll be installing a few tools in your system and all the configuration files related to this, most of them would be stored in the ETC folder. So yeah, this is basically the ETC folder and you should know what is happening inside here. Okay, we are just at about the end of this particular section. Bear with me. I just want to talk about two more directories. The one is media and the other is the MNT directory here. Now, both of these folders are essentially used when you actually plug in an external storage device on your machine. So in the past, if you were to plug in an external storage device in your machine, you would have to manually input that. You'll have to manually configure that particular device in the folder which is called as MNT. So you'd have to manually do the configurations and stuff like that. But nowadays the media folder is where all the external storage that you plug in into your machine is automatically mounted and you can just use it while your operating system is running. So this is the media and the MNT folder. I hope that was clear. All right, so in this particular video, we covered a lot of the essential folders that are inside your root directory and in the file system. But of course, there is a lot to cover when we talk about the Linux file system. As I mentioned previously, it is in the form of a hierarchy. So we have some files, then we have subdirectories to that, and then it leads to more directories and more files. It's a lot, as I mentioned. So of course, everything could not be covered in this particular video, but I really hope that you got a nice overview of what exactly is the Linux file system, what are all the essential folders that are included in this, you know, how these folders are structured and how you can use them. If you want to dig a little bit deeper into the file system, I definitely link down some of the blogs that I came across while researching for this particular topic. You can definitely check those out. Again, all the essential links that I mentioned in this particular video are in the description box down below. So make sure you check those out. And again, uh, I'll definitely recommend you to watch the essential Linux command video that would be linked on the I button here or here. I guess it's here. So yeah, uh, you can definitely find that. But yeah, thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye everyone.